Good for Halloween and animal lovers everywhere. The Black <laughs> oh, Cat God. by Edgar Allan Poe coming up today. It was just straightforward the whole way, right, Noah? <laughs> yeah, straightforward and beautifully written. And um, any excuse to pull out my big edition here. I love Poe and revisiting Poe on the um, Halloween season, right? Mm-hmm. Well, let me kick it off with this question, because this is not all any like all of us. This is not our first Poe. And something that Poe likes to do is almost have like this frame narrative where he starts the story off trying to tell you like, hey, guys, um, I'm, I'm not crazy. It's cool. Just trust me. I'm not crazy. And then he launches into this story where he's clearly crazy <laughs> or at least <laughs> or at least we're given permission to to judge this character. Right. Is this character really going into madness? Talk to me about wh- why do you think he starts his stories this way? It's uh, it's definitely kind of a hallmark, right? Uh, the telltale heart comes to mind uh, very much with this kind of story, even the pit and the pendulum because of the exploration of madness. But I think having a framing for the narrative allows you to, you know, have that little bit of space, of course, then even just a reader stumbling upon it is able to enter into it without their, their full self kind of being there. (laughs) Right. Yeah. That's a really good point. I uh, I don't know about you, but I'm always I'm always starting to feel this this almost like complex, like I'm supposed to be saving the character. Like I I almost feel invited into the story of just like you know when a friend needs help, like like I'm yeah I'm I'm gonna lose it, man. You want to step in and save them, and I almost feel like sometimes for me like the way that these stories start out with Poe, it's almost like he's inviting me to save someone. But can you really save someone from madness? I don't know if. Poe knew that almost every one of his stories, books, everything he did was going to become so mainstream, so attached to Halloween, so attached to horror and psychological issues. But I feel like every single time he was trying to knock it out of the park, every single time he he knew that he had to write it almost the same way because I, I don't know if he felt like every single one of his stories was going to be this way. And so I think that he frames his narrative not knowing if you're a Poe fan. If you've never read a Poe before, you don't know that there's a twist going to kind of come. You don't know that he's going to pull the rug from underneath you. So he wants to set it up the same. And I think that becomes his trademark when he knows I'm going to set the story this way. I'm going to guide you down this path. And then I'm going to knock you off the path whether you like it or not. And I think that he does such a beautiful job. We start to enjoy that, you know? I think we're, you know, a little bit crazy for enjoying it, but he does such a good job. I can't help but just love going back to these stories. Right. He's very high literary uh, and a a very strong predisposition to psychology. And I think he found a formula with writing. You know, of course, his poetry is always beautiful and his writing is beautiful like that. But he found a formula with storytelling with these kind of things too. Exactly. It is, it, it, there's something to be said about, you know, he didn't know that everything would be popular as popular as it is now. Of course. I mean, he's a legend, but he's tweaking stories, right? He's tweaking the way he's doing certain things, um, exploring madness in this one. Well, I think there's a th- the beautiful thing about Poe is if we look at this story, you, you took madness. And I think that that is obviously one way you can take it. Uh, but one way that I definitely took it was, I feel like the narr- this is unreliable narrator. I think Poe was trying to say, don't believe everything that you read. Uh, I think there's so many avenues you can talk about alcoholism because Poe himself struggled with substance abuse. You can talk about symbolism with the cat itself and what does it mean? Uh, the loss of your, your, your psyche or your wholeness. There's, there's so many things in this story that are crammed in here. It's just absolutely incredible that it is in one story. And that, that's why I think Poe is such the legend, as you said. Yeah, and being so literary, it's, um, you can't help but think about these things. Like the list of the animals that are all in the house. This guy lives in a zoo. And, <laughs> and when you think about animals like that in a literary sense these are emotional states these are mind states he lives in a zoo his life is very chaotic in some kind of way even if not outwardly but it would be outwardly as well living in a zoo right he has a small monkey it says (laughs) (laughs) rabbits small monkey but there's this cat the cat is the the main thing and alcoholism is mentioned in that 
uh, in the beginning of this story as a cause, as a root cause of the of uh, this, what he goes through, and then never mentioned again. And you have to constantly kind of remind yourself that this is at play. Well, we're led to believe that, right? We don't know that for sure. He thinks he's telling the story truthfully or coherently, but he may be mumbling. <laughs> Well, it's, it's interesting, too, because when you bring in the alcoholism, this terrible disease that he describes it as. A demon. He describes it as a total demon that possesses him. Yeah. Right. And, and, and that could be true for some people, right? Yes. And, and right. what does he change from to? Because in the beginning of the story, he's compassionate. He loves these animals. Monkeys, dogs are his friends. When he's young. When he's young. And, and I guess. Not story. Like, you know, yeah, when he's recounting his his adolescence mm -hmm. and, and and the the cat and his wife the cat pluto yeah. is pluto it, it, it well first of all it's pluto is another term for the the hades god of the underworld perhaps a little bit more kind and such and we've seen for example in the poem the raven he talks about the raven landing on athena's head there's there's clearly some play here too with how poe likes to have pluto becomes things. this cat becomes his private hell Hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that is that uh, the underworld hell? It is. A, I I totally believe that. Well, he he definitely announces to us that he's irked by something, right? Which is another Poe thing to to have this irrational anger and emotional outlashing that he blames on the cat. At least I'll say that he he blames the cat for this. I'm not sure if the cat really deserves it. I don't think any animal deserves to have its an uh, eye cut out and then being hung. I think it was right. uh, hanged. Uh, I just, I, right. I, it's, it's this, this Poe formula of irrational anger and, and this madness. And you're kind of questioning what could be done almost. Well, I mean, you, you go, it is a thing <clears throat> where he cuts the eye out because of alcoholism. It is a night of like pure stupor. And he's like in this frenzy and he, does this to the cat, latches out in violence to something that he loves. And it's shocking and very hardcore. But then there's that whole diatribe mm -hmm. where he's talking about doing evil for evil's sake. It's, it's a feeling of a desire stand in your own way of growth in some kind of thing. And that kind of, uh, believing Believing that is believing in a lie. Okay, so once somebody is already there where they've already taken that step, where they have a desire, you know, is feeding into a negativity that deep, um, we're already on very shaky ground, right? And then he acts completely out on this committing a sin for the sake of it being a sin talk even invokes god and says i'm doing it because it's gonna bring damnation upon me this kind of thing like a dare to the universe or something like that right and then hangs the cat and then in an un unexpressed way there's a fire that destroys the entire house except for one wall like a, a complete destruction it's an apocalyptic event this kind of thing in the story i want to come back to a few things you said and kind of i think tie up together how i felt reading this story of all these different levels i felt like the cat itself was a symbol for himself i don't know if the cat was really real because he's an unreliable narrator in my mind i feel like the cat is uh the second cat um I think the second cat is in his imagination because I, I think it represents the narrator himself and that if you look at how he treats the animals, it's how he himself is devolving into madness throughout the story. In the beginning, he's pretty docile according to himself and he's okay and he's able to be basically a functioning alcoholic and he's nice to the animals. What happens as things progress through the story is he devolves into that demonic nature committing sins and then he starts getting meaner and meaner to the animals, cutting out their eyes, torturing them, doing all these horrible things. Takes and, hold. Yeah, and I think that's because he comes back to, he's doing this to himself. And that's why I, I think that the second cat is literally stuff that he's doing to himself. And we, we could look at it from the point, if you got 
drunk or if you abused some substance, you are doing damage to yourself. And Poe studied, you know, religion and demonism and all of that. And I think he's trying to say that these these demonic powers are so closely related to the the, the sins that we do to ourselves. And I the think that's how he's trying to connect substances. all the story together. Yeah. Oh, bro. It, and and it is like it's it's awesome. And I think you're onto something with the second cat. You know, I think that could just be, um, you know, who knows how Poe really where he's set with it in this because i do think that this is an exploration of uh going through the kind of thing that he did with the telltale heart especially there's too many similarities between that short story and this um do, do you guys remember where he saw the doppelganger cat for the first time he says he was in a very lurid no an infamous place in uh known for its infamy right it was an alcohol store Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, a liquor store. Yeah. Or I thought it was either a bar or a liquor store. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A place where they sell his alcohol. Right. AKA, well, AKA his right. downfall, his demon. Right. And, and a, right. a common thing in literature with doppelgangers, when you, and, and Poe loves this, right? When you look at William Wilson and some of his other stories, what do these other characters mean to the main character? Because that's why they exist, is it's usually something to either, show a foil of the main character or bring out something about the main character that they don't see. So here's this cat that might represent some of his own sin downfall or obsession with alcohol. And he sees a doppelganger around the alcohol. Like there's something about how addicts have this obsession of surrounding themselves with these things that allow them to commit these sins. They put themselves in these situations where they can fail. Cause I think deep down inside, some people do want to fail potentially. Well, or they don't want the responsibility. That's yeah. what it just comes down to. You know what I mean? Uh, this kind of thing is very telling and how Poe is in the subtext showing that he's hammered right all the time <clears throat> that I've been, I had been looking steadily at the top of this hogshead for some minutes. <laughs> And what now caused me to surprise was the fact that I had no sooner perceived the object thereupon and then he approached it, touched it with his hand. It's the black cat. So he's sitting there like in the liquor store, right? And then says he's staring at this hog's head up there for some minutes and then doesn't even notice the cat. But then when he notices it, he pets it. You know, it is somebody that is not, not exactly lucid. And he's describing it plainly. Do you think that as he's embracing this evil and evil more, going down the, the rabbit hole of, of demonic choices... That again, Poe is coming back to one of the lessons that I think that he tries to put in many of his stories is that what is the moral nature of man? Where does it come from? Is it something that is nature versus nurture? Because I kind of feel like this one is is kind of nurture, right? He, the, the, I feel like the narrator feels like this is done unjustly to him, and so he has to react. He has to retaliate in kind. Well, let's pick that apart because right. He what do you think out, it is? What do you think the cat symbolizes? Well, let, let's start here too, because because he started out very kind, and then he turns out to be very rude. And when he does kill Pluto, he feels remorse. Right? There's an immediate regret, but 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 that that means when we talk about morality with with your statement, that's assuming he can detect the difference between right and wrong, which he clearly did with Pluto. But correct. when we get to the, the he's going to kill the second cat, the doppelganger cat, except that has the white tuft with a gallow symbol, a.k.a. something that's going to be hung. Hmm, no symbolism there. <laughs> he turns and just whacks his wife with no oh. with no second thought. And immediately he turns into like Raskolnikov, like where we put the body. Right. Like, <laughs> I know we got to we got to go into hide, hide it mode thing. immediately. <laughs> well, and there was no there's no remorse. There's no question yeah. as was this right or wrong. He went from recognizing it and being a human being with the first murder and, and, and feeling bad about it with the cat to his wife, who has less characterization through this whole piece. We learn more about Pluto than we do about his dang wife. And then she's just taken out and stuffed in the fireplace. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's ridiculous, but the all the exposition between that part, that's what I think gives you a little way to work into it, maybe. Okay, because he uses the word, he says that dread sets in, 
at some point. And the dread, when he uses the word dread and says that in there, immediately after that is followed the image of this cat, which may or may not be an apparition. The white tuft on the cat becomes a reminiscent to him viewing it of a gallows, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And th this cat, the more adver aversion he shows toward the cat, the more the cat loves on him. And he's becoming a, more and more unhinged and crazy. Self-torment is in play all through that uh, diatribe there and madness. <laughs> and he says he had develops a hatred of all things and a hatred of all people. Okay. He gets there and then uh, there's the scene where my lovely wife, my patient wife, and he's, you know, and, 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 and he brutally murders her. It's ridiculous. It's like madness breaks through to complete horror. And that horror they, is then sustained a little while. I don't know if I felt like it was exactly that because I felt like Poe was telling me, I it kind of spoke to me of this is how I felt as a young man. Uh, because we really don't know how old he is, the narrator. It never really speaks to his age. And I remember being impulsive as a young teenage boy. I remember struggling with my temper. I, I remember having violent outbursts where I would just throw things because I was angry. This speaks to a very young man in many regards in this story of somebody that is afraid of his own masculinity, I feel like. It is reckless and then calculating in response to the recklessness. Do you think there's any... Oh, I like that. You mentioned earlier, Noah, how he's almost like creating his own hell. Like literally his house burned down. They went into poverty at that point. Like right. All of his wealth, his possessions. And he just right. continues to lose it. And it's almost like... He, he says he embraces despair at that point. He right. embraces the despair. Is there anything to be said about how... If, if that's despair and fire represents this burning of the world. Well, or to, just giving into and becoming a complete alcoholic, giving into the <laughs> despair of life is what, what he does after that. What does it mean that he threw his wife in the fireplace there, the place where fire once was and tries we to hurt those we love the most? Yeah. Walder up in the fireplace, you mean? Yeah. Like, what does it mean that he's you putting her in that? And that fire, that fire plays a part in the whole uh, story as symbolism. That's what burnt the image of the cat with the noose into that wall, right? So there's that, uh, in, in, I guess in smoke, you know, in black burnt against the wall, um, a result of fire, and you know, multiple symbols used very well here. Do you think when the police come? And he, he, the narrator is the one telling us this story. So, so he's telling us how confident he is. Well, wait, wait, wait. Before that, before the police come, there's this ridiculous and I think a wonderful spot where this narrator shows his complete madness by uh, not just not having remorse for the wife, because it's not that. He does what he has to do, and it's this calculating thing. And he says, "Oh, I've have a job well done now." And then he, um, then he's elated because the cat's gone. Right? He mm -hmm. he he knows he's going to go kill the cat. He's decided to kill <laughs> his second cat, and the cat's gone. And he's elated. And there's like nights of pure bliss. And he's in heaven. And it's like, wait, you just killed your wife. Uh, wait a second. But it's all about this cat. It's all about the cat, right? Because he's completely insane. Well, it's like he replaced one sickness of alcoholism with another sickness of this these murders that he's going through. And the second he buries his first sickness, which we said was representative even maybe of, of the cat, suddenly the cat disappears almost because it got replaced with a new sickness. So are all these animals, you think, representations of his psychological dilemmas? Like the cat is alcoholism, maybe the chimp is is something else, and that all these animals Poe is trying to say are physical representations of this the psyche of the narrator? 
Well, for sure, I would say this. Sometimes when we have these diseases in our past, you don't leave them behind. Like like a lot of people when they're an alcohol, they're they're still they carry that with them. Right, you know they're trained I mean? still alcoholic. Like, yeah, in the same way behavior. that that cat was on the wall after the fire with, with the noose around its neck, his disease, his illness is still there in the background. Even though, to your point, Noah, we don't talk about it anymore after that. It right. just disappears, but he still carries or subtext. it. There's subtext. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, for sure. Um, so, so let's talk about the the knocking and the police at the end, because because I want to get your opinion on this. <laughs> I think he presents it as I'm so confident I'm knocking on this wall before it falls down and the police find the body and that's where the cat is. Right. But I want to ask this question. Is he really that confident or does he just want to get caught? Because I think we have a question about whether does he really feel grief or not up until this moment, because he tells us he doesn't have it, but we see how he carries these diseases of the past. We see how he carries over grief and he possesses the ability to do it. Is he knocking on the wall really hard with the hopes that he almost turns himself in with the idea that that this is his way of finally paying for his sins? Yeah, I, I, I think so, for sure. I believe that he, he, he recognizes the evil in himself. And I think that if you look at prisoners that have been in prison for decades, uh, they realize the the sin, the wrongness of what they did. Many of them are remorseful, not all. I mean, if you're a true psychopath, then no, because that probably part of your brain or whatever makes you a psychopath is not allowing you to be empathetic to human life. But I think our narrator had maybe psychological issues, tried coping with that with alcoholism. Obviously, that didn't work. He tried beating it. It failed. That's the death of the cat. And then... After he commits this atrocity, the worst sin of all of taking a human life, he tries to hide it by burying her. That doesn't work. And now he wants to be caught uh, so he can pay for his sins. That's awesome. And I mean, I think it really does speak to how I ended up with this through this reading. I had read this story, you know, through my life, read uh the first time 20 years ago, 22 years ago, like the year 2000, when I, when I uh, gained this edition, I just went through it. I love this. So do I think that he was confident? Yes, for sure. I think that he got arrogant and I think that that's the kind of thing that Poe, you, uh, employs very well and in other stories as well where now this character is feeling strong within himself enough to you know even push his luck and he does but the result is not um the you know an, caused by what he did um if it's caused by what he did maybe it would be an unfamiliar sound comes from the the mortar or, and the brick or uh it seems not as stable or something as it should be or something like this right and instead we have this shrieking and how it's uh characterized <coughs> is really cool and it is almost a supernatural thing yeah. in that moment of experiencing the shrieking and this sound coming from the wall the the detectives were walking up the damn stairs he in the middle of his arrogance he says <laughs> he says guys wait <laughs> let me tell you about how awesome my building is <laughs> right yeah. it's unbelievable but what comes from the wall is this how shriek whine cry and it's this high pitched is to, to find his high said high pitched at some point it's awesome that when it's revealed he had in his drunken stupor okay because i'm saying imagine this he is hammered <laughs> and he kills his wife and he is hammered and he walls her up and he didn't realize that the cat was in there so once he's done he's like hammered and he's like great job i did a great job now to kill that cat and <laughs> can't find it right can't find it 
and then is elated and drunk for days and now in his arrogance busts himself out because he he's he's giving the cat attention uh that's close to death maybe right and it's it's completely horrifying but it it wasn't caused by him directly right it's almost like this supernatural thing and then it comes back to it's it's just that he 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 outed himself he even if he didn't um hit on the wall he might have been busted out because he walled that cat up with it right yeah i wonder to kind of how crypto responded there if if we go back to the initial question of why make this a framed narrative and he knows he's going to die he knows he's in prison is this his confession is is this his he's seeking forgiveness from us the reader and not necessarily help like i originally said but maybe it's he's seeking he's seeking peace of mind because he knows he's going into the afterlife he's going into that fire that he's going to go go see pluto <laughs> <laughs> and, and now he needs forgiveness. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't see it as forgiveness. Uh, looking for anything. I think. I, I just feel an exploration of what um, ways ways you can go wrong and like you know, being able to touch going mad without actually <laughs> dabbling in this kind of thing. Right. Uh, it's kind of a. That's that's the that's the the shtick that's the gimmick of the thing that's why it's a genre that's why it's horror even though it's very literary horror whatever that's why it's part of this whole thing like that right but there is something really big um as far as like psychologically that i think is going on with this very short short story crypto said it uh, uh what crypto has said i think supports it hmm. well i think when you look at poe in general right uh, it it's impossible to read this story and come away with the same thing every time you read it. Uh, I think this is the third time I've read this story. And because, you know, my wife recently, you know, in the last few years has become a, a therapist and I, re I graded a lot of her papers when she was going and getting her master's degree, I started looking at this more from like a therapeutic standpoint and a psychological or sociological a aspect of it and alcoholism and addiction and abuse and there's just there's so much more that I took away from it this reading, but I know that when I read this in high school or when I was 17, 18, 19, something like that, I didn't see that. You know, I saw it very supernatural. You know, I didn't pick up on all of the, you know, the Greek stuff, the religious stuff, because I, I hadn't studied that yet. So I think that's one of the beautiful things of a story like this is when you read it, it is going to matter because you're going to be able to pull so many things out. And you don't have to have an explanation. You don't have to agree with this at all. It's just whatever spoke to you that Poe gave you in this story, I think that's enough. It's so awesome because, I mean, it, it is deep like that. He's got layers in there because he invokes God. It is very psychological. And he's invoking, you know, God and his decision on how to live his life, right? So you can't help but um, try to dig into that psychological aspect. I do have some thoughts. <laughs> that's why we invited you on okay um um let me see you know and i've i've tried to put them in a coherent way maybe y'all can help me or you know let's see if i can get there so at the beginning this kid loves animals right so we have a very caring uh towards animals um person animals don't have their own voice they can't talk mm. right Okay. They don't have their own agency the way that human beings do to to handle themselves and to um you know say what they want. They're more like we would be you know look at a baby, right? You can just scream for something you need without saying specifically what it is, cry, um lash out. These kind of things are communications, not um emotional states like they are to an adult or something right so the kid is is this kind of thing where he sees this he's learning about animals and has this really really deep connection with animals that is of face baseline fundamental and that he sees an animal's helplessness okay the 
the alcohol turns the person around on 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 its head and the understanding around on its head makes it skewed makes it inverted in a way that this kind of thing now sees through his own actions see he's testing god he's testing the universe and by his own actions he's taking um i think we could make first off i think i need to make the argument that there is a certain uh, there's no right or wrong in the animal kingdom right uh the he, the the lion is not wrong for murdering the baby deer a little baby helpless animal <laughs> a lion murders it brutally and eats it alive <laughs> that is not wrong because that is their nature and they are true to their nature they are true animals are true right so this this uh being confuses that truth that animals have with a kind of innocence i think in a way mm. that they're helpless and they need to be protected in this kind of thing and he's lashing out and testing this kind of thing by brutalizing the cat do you think maybe he's also looking at it that he's an animal? I mean, because technically we are as well. I mean, he's definitely becoming inhuman. But, it's okay. not that because we make up morality, right? I, I mean, that if you're yeah, saying that exactly animals right. don't have morality, we created that. What if he doesn't have it? Right. And I think I think he is losing morality completely. He loses his humanity completely. That's when he says, I hate all people and I hate humanity. He mm -hmm. says that. Mm hmm. So when he says that, that's when he, he, you know, he's at this point um, because he's already, you know, brutalized this cat and murdered this cat. And he, there is a level of guilt with it, but guilt's not the right word. He's testing the universe and it is a test to God whether this thing can will stand or not. And he sees that and why he hates humanity is because see him as his human testing and being in, involved in this choice humanity destroys the innocence humanity destroys this truth that the animals are right so the mm. in the psychology it's working out that he is has um pinpointed is his own human human side as the antithesis of what he loves and becomes a hatred a hate filled hate fueled monster i think when it comes back to looking at the story we got to go back to it being poe right we know that poe struggled with substance abuse we know that many people have studied his life right and well he, he died probably on, had on the side some, of the road yeah he probably had some type of psychological issue um and he used substances to, he probably, probably was bipolar. Um, I've seen that a few times, people saying that he was probably, you know, manic depressant, up, down, up, down, up, down. And yeah, when he was, when he was, you know, in one of his episodes, he probably wrote a lot of these things because he was trying to cope with his own psychological problems. And I think to kind of go back to what Una said, I think Poe might have been through a lot of these stories and this one in particular, because it feels like it's hitting way close to home for him and his life. And his, what he was led to believe society told him were sins. I think he's trying to question, do I need God or religion? Do I need that in order to have morality? So, so what we're saying is that this is an amazing story. And for October, everybody needs to go out and read it and share with us your interpretation in the comments down below. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> you can read that. Yes. You can read this story in 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. There's nothing to it. And it's going to stick with you. If you've never read the black cat by Edgar Allan Poe, go for it. So in the link down below is going to be Noah's channel where he has plenty of wonderful talks, very insightful thoughts into the things that he reads. Noah, always a pleasure to have you on this channel. Thank you, brother. I love hanging at the Codex Cantina Uno and Crypto. Y'all do it right, always. All right, guys. Yes, thank you. Peace. It's been a pleasure. Peace. Bye-bye, y'all.